Hi, welcome to today's video. In one of our earlier videos, we talked about creating a range of dates in order to make sure that no gaps were left in our report that we wanted to generate for puppy registration. For a fleeting moment, I mentioned that we did not have in our data warehouse for Daisy Hill a date dimension. And that if you did have a good date dimension, you could use it as opposed to the generate rows widget that we used. So I took some time and created a date dimension. Utilizing this date dimension leads us into another subject area as well, which will be the topic of an up and coming video, which is what happens when there is too much data to bring down out of your data warehouse and have Alteryx begin to, to use filters or other functions to limit the amount of data that you're working on. And so that is really where we're headed. But first, today, we're going to look at this date dimension that I decided that we needed to create and is good to have in any very effective data warehouse. So very quickly, we're going to pull up in my model this very simple date dimension. What you need to put in your date dimension, if you have created one or you're going to be creating one, is anything that your consumers might need to use as far as a date is concerned. And so therefore, you do not have to do any of the calculations, extractions, or other formatting required from an individual date. When I was at a healthcare provider a number of years ago, we actually created a date dimension that had over 250 attributes. Because not only did it include the numeric values, such as we have in this date dimension, but also the character versions of them as well. So again, you don't want your end consumer or analyst having to do all this formatting and understand all this formatting of dates to get the information that they need from a date to present in their report. For this date dimension, though, we've kept it a bit simpler, but you can see how you can expand this out. We have the actual calendar date, always something very good to have, as well as probably your starting point. We then have the day of the month in numeric format, the day of the week, the day of the year, the actual month, the quarter, an indicator as to whether it's a weekday or a weekend, one of each, just so that you don't have to always know to flip an indicator from positive to negative. We have the numeric version of the year, the numeric version of the year and month together, and then the numeric version of the year, the month, and the day combined. Things that you would consider in this are also, also indicators or information concerning the fiscal month, the fiscal year, for a specific day. You might also need to know whether it's a holiday, a federal government holiday, a state holiday, or just a corporate holiday, whether or not pay is increased because of it. Any of those information that people might need to know when they're doing reporting, put in your date dimension. So we've created this little date dimension. We need to populate these. This brings me up to my second web page I'm going to show you, which is the Alteryx Help. In this documentation, if you go into Functions, and then go down to date time functions. Within the format specifiers, these show you the codes that are used to specify different components associated with a date and a time. You would use these specifiers or formats if you're bringing data from text into a date field or taking data from a date field and putting it into a text field. So this has a nice list of all of these. For my date time function, we're going to be using a couple of things to create the attributes. And I went ahead and put those into a spreadsheet. You also have down at the bottom the actual web link that will take you into the date time function, part of the Alteryx help system. So these are the fields that we want to create. 
There are some specific Alteryx functions that can get us this information, so we don't have to go through the date time format function. For those that are blank, we will be using the date time format, which actually will bring in data out from a date field and create a text field for us. For example, day of month, there is actual function, date time day. For the month number, there's date time month, and for the year, there's date time year. Within the format thing of these, percent D is a day, percent W is the week number, percent J is the day of year number, percent M will be month. Make sure it's case matches what you want to do. And you can see that we are using these to go ahead and create the individual fields that we need. How we do that is pretty simple as I drag all of this out of the way and we go into my Alteryx workflow. And I will go ahead and open my recent workflow, which is generate date time dimension. It's pretty simple after you look at it. Basically, we use the generate rows function to create a set of records that have a date in them starting at 2010-0101 and ending at 2030-1231. This is a very small date dimension. You need to consider when you're creating your date dimension, one, how far back in time you need to look to have any dates that are within your data going into your data martyr data warehouse. What is the oldest date that you potentially have? And how far in the future do you need to run this to do any kind of future calculations as well as so that you're not adding dates every single month. Within the healthcare field, you're looking at a window starting out with about 200 years of data in it. Because you have patients in your hospital that were 100 years old, so you got to make sure that you can represent their birth date as well as extrapolating forward your patients that are born today, you might be doing some predictive analytics leading them forward at 100 years. It's just something to consider. For this one, we just went ahead with 20 years. Then all that we need to do is calculate all these fields. And I'll walk you through looking at these as we go. Once we've done that, we make sure we have proper formatting, proper order, we then use my macro to go ahead and populate them into a table in my SQL database. Again, I like this macro because if I decide to switch to a different RDBMS, I just have to change the macro rather than changing everywhere that I happen to be creating tables. So the simple ones out of the way, day of month is a simple function, date, date time day. Then we move forward to something a little bit more complicated, and that is using the date time format because I want to know the day of the week. So the date time format for calendar date is percent %w gives the day of the week. I add one to it because I like to have Sunday as one and Saturday as seven as opposed to zero through six. Just makes sense to me. Most people are used to seeing it that way. I also have to take this because this comes out as a text string. I need to convert that to a number so I can do the math on it as well as to store it. Following through pretty quickly, we do the same thing for the day of the year. We use the date time month to get the date number, get the month number from the date. Quarter is a simple calculation. We use the ceiling function that actually will truncate that number so we will actually end up with one two, three, and four. Good function to know it's there. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to find. Weekday indicator, we just go ahead and use an if-then-else structure, looking for a one or a seven in the day of the week, if that is true. 
then it is not a weekday. So I set that to zero. If it is otherwise a one, making it to be the weekday indicator, weekend indicator, same structure, but instead of a zero and one, I use one and zero. Pretty easy to copy this out using the recent expressions that can be found on the saved expressions icon. Year number is a direct function, date, time, year. Then I need to get a little creative. The year and month together, I take the year number times 100 plus the month number. One of the things to keep in mind that I like to sh point out when I'm doing this is that as you are creating new attributes or new modifications, all the existing ones are available to you in sequential order. So when this formula runs, it'll create these new field values starting at the top and working its way down. So at the bottom, we can go ahead and reference something that we've created up above. So we don't have to put as much information in there. That's also helpful when you're doing a complex calculation. You can calculate it in pieces and make sure the calculation looks right and then leave them out in the select statement afterwards. Makes debugging and verifying much easier. Year, month, day obviously includes all three elements. And then finally, the width, we actually wanted to make that the same as the year, month, day calculation, just for convenience purposes. That being said, we go ahead and run that through, populate it into our table, and then we can begin to run queries going against this table as opposed to having to make updates along the way. But where this presents a problem is that if I have 200 years worth of data, I don't want to bring 200 years worth of data down into my Alteryx workflow in order to pull off a week's worth of data. I have to come up with another solution. This is also a problem, especially when you get into some of the larger data warehouses. You don't want to be running your filters or even some of your joins through massive sets of data inside your Alteryx workflow. Not that it can't handle it, it's just that it takes time. So the next set of videos that I'll be creating will show you ways to get around large sets of data and keeping your Alteryx workflows fast and efficient. Have any questions? Please subscribe. Put your questions in the comments and I can address them. Also ideas for further tutorials can be put in there and I will address them.